So we're going to talk about layers here in this little uh, movie. Um, basically, the way that layers work in Illustrator is that you do have a layers panel um, or palette window, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, generally, it's up by default. You should be able to find it with all of your other panels, um, usually located on the right side of your screen. Um, if for whatever reason you don't see a layers uh, panel, you can go to window layers and that'll either open it or bring it to the forefront if it's hidden behind a different tab. Um, the layers uh, panel works you know, fairly close to how uh, the Photoshop layers panel works if you've worked with Photoshop. Um, but with, uh, with quite a bit uh, unique characteristics as well. And the first unique characteristic is that um, you start off on layer one and um, I'm just going to draw with the pencil a little bit so every time I you know draw a new shape um, it's all pretty much bundled into layer one so anything I do right now um, drawing either with a pencil or a pen tool or if I went into shapes or brushes whatever any artwork that I generate is going to be um, put into layer one. And uh, even if I was to bring in a picture and place it, it would be put into layer one. Everything is kept in layer one until I specifically tell Illustrator that I would like to work with another layer. Um, what's actually happening kind of under the hood uh, is that I'm creating a bunch of sub layers. If I open up layer one, you'll see there's a little triangle there that you can click on, twirl it open, and you end up seeing that there is a recording for every um, uh, object, shape, or path, whatever it was, um, that I drew here uh, today. So um, these are paths and each path has its own placement in a layer that is unique to each other path. Um, so the very first one that I um, drew is this guy at the bottom because it starts stacking upwards. So the earliest artwork is pushed down to the bottom and the most recent artwork is um, floating up at the top. So this um, this relationship to a layer, the fact that a layer can be open and that you can have you know things happening within the layer that still keep them separate from other elements is one of the unique um, uh, factors of layers in Illustrator. These um, these paths here, um, sub layers, whatever you want to call them, uh, operate in, in also kind of a unique way where I can select different paths in the layer window, but it actually doesn't select the path for me on my artboard. If I was to get my selection tool and actually click on one of these elements, these objects, a um, bounding boxes, you know, uh, displayed around the artwork, I can see the path, I can see my points, and in my layers window it still doesn't highlight the layer that I'm on. The layer that is highlighted is still the layer that I had clicked on earlier in the layers panel. But what does show up is that there's this little box on the very right hand side of that path and that is telling me that it is this one right here in the layers panel that is currently selected on my artboard. So if you just kind of watch and see what happens as you click on different elements you'll see that that little box um, relocates. So now it's telling me that this second to the top path here is the one that I've selected. That's because it was the second to the last stroke. But that little box is showing me what's selected on, on the canvas or the artboard, not the fact that that layer is selected. So you can go through and select these things and it does nothing. <laughs> it does nothing to your artwork. The idea is to actually select it on your artboard or you can also click in an empty area along any of those paths and that will select that path on the artboard. So you can see that as I 
go through and select different layers um, by using this little box that actually selects them on the artboard. So there's, there's a total difference between selecting these sub layers versus selecting the little um, like activation box on the right there. There is a name for that thing. I once knew it, but right now I, I really don't remember what it's called. Target, maybe? Um, if I hover over it, will it tell me? Well, it indicates selected art. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> not a very good name, but uh, so if I were to collapse layer one so that it's all bundled together, um, I, I could select the entire layer one by clicking in that same area on the side of layer one. And what that does is it selects everything that is bundled underneath layer one's wing, basically. Um, and that guarantees that everything on layer one is going to be selected. At that point, I could do whatever it is that I wanted to do to it, modify it move it, um, whatever. So that's a little bit about sublayers and selecting. Um, now a layer can be renamed and also set up with different parameters by double clicking on it. When you double click on it, it opens up our layer options. And this is where you can set a name for your layer. Um, you can adjust its color so that it's selected under a different color on the artboard. Um, we can also do things like set a layer as a template. You can lock a layer. You can choose to show the layer or not. You can choose to have that layer be printed or not. You can have it be previewed or not. And then images that are on a layer, not artwork, but images you can dim to 50%, um, which kind of just takes their intensity away while you work. It's something that uh, you, you won't find too um, helpful. But generally, the, the preset is that the layer will be shown, the layer will be printed, and it will be previewed. Um, if you were to change any of those things, if I was to click on lock and then hit OK, then the, what actually is adjusted or ch um, what's different over here in the layers panel is that there is a lock area, a little checkbox to lock a layer. And if a layer is locked, you cannot select anything on that layer. So you see right now my, my cursor is no longer a selection arrow. It is a little pencil with a slash through it, which means I, it's locked. I can't do anything to it. I wouldn't be able to draw on this layer. I won't be able to select things. This layer is permanently locked. To unlock it, you just unclick or whatever. You click off the lock so that it's not checked anymore. Or you can double click back on the layer options and then un uncheck lock. If I take off show and print, then that basically just means that we're hiding it. Um, that little visibility eyeball thing that is on the left side of the layers um, panel is your visibility. So you can you can lock layers manually or in the layer options window you can make layers be shown or hidden by clicking on the eyeball or by doing it in the layers option. When a layer is not shown or um, hidden it is not going to print obviously. So that should give you an idea that anything that is visible um, uh, generally in a project uh, on the artboard will be printed. However, there is the option to say, I'd like to show a layer, but I would not like to print it. Um, that is a, that's a great thing for building templates or leaving notes for yourself or if you're passing a document on to another artist. Um, and you want to make sure that those notes are edits or whatever it is that, you're, that you've put in your document don't get printed, you can choose for an entire layer to not print. Um, and that, uh, that comes in handy. Uh, I think we'll actually get into a project where, um, oh we will, it'll be our magazine project. We'll be using this to our advantage. Um, for now I'm just going to hit OK. I like the way things are here. Um, so um, Adding new layers is as easy as going to either the little flyout menu on the very right side of the layers palette. You can see that you have a new layer, and then you have something called a new sublayer. So you can create your own sublayers that don't have anything in them, they're just empty. And once I do that, it wants to know what my sublayer will be called, you know, what color it'll be, and so on. So, um, I'll just hit cancel and not do that. But that would just make an empty uh, sublayer to a layer. And sometimes uh, sublayers are 
um, convenient because you get to keep things nice and tidy within a layer but still have some flexibility of layers within themselves. Um, if you're trying to do different options for designs, leaving your, you know, um, the different different takes on text or different placement of things, uh, it's pretty. That's a it's a good deal. So either a new layer or new sub layer. You can also duplicate layers. You can open up your options from here. It's the same as double clicking. Um, Clipping mask and isolation mode, we'll get into this later. Flattening artwork and collecting a new layer. This is stuff that we'll eventually get to. Um, same with releasing layers and building and all that junk that is down here. Um, for the most part, just making new layers and managing your layers is what we're talking about at this moment. So there are some buttons at the bottom. And you have a new layer button, you have a new sub-layer button, or you have this make and release clipping mask button. Um, if you were to click on the new layer button, it gives you a new layer. Um, if you option click on it, it'll give you the layer options immediately so you can name something, choose the color you want that layer to be, whether or not it's a, you know locked or printed, whatever. So now that I have layer two up, if I go grab my, my pencil tool and I make some lines, you see that since layer 2 was selected and activated, then that's where my artwork is going to go. If I open that up, now I have four new paths under layer 2. Um, this uh, new layer um, has a s stacking order relationship with layer 1. Since it is on top, that means that if these lines were to cross over any other artwork on a layer beneath it, that they would have visual priority. They're going to be on top of the image. Um, so you can manage layers in their stacking order by dragging layers around up or down and putting them underneath or on top of other layers. But you want to be very careful when you're stacking uh, layers or reordering them. You want to make sure that you see the line that actually goes all the way through um, the uh, the little layer bar it has a triangle that is between layers because you'll see that if you hover over an existing layer you can actually bundle a layer into another layer so what I just did is I just took layer two and put it into layer one now I have one layer again that is represented by all the artwork but I still can go into layer one and open up layer two and I can see my paths and all that stuff and at any time if I want to I can pull it out and this is something that sounds really like basic, um, but if you're not comfortable moving those layers around and if you aren't paying attention and not visually seeing the difference between stacking a layer above or below another versus actually putting it in a layer, then it's going to cause you a lot of trouble down the road. So, I mean, practice it. It's a stupid, it sounds so silly to say. Um, to practice moving layers, but you need to learn and know and feel comfortable at how Illustrator behaves so that you can um, not end up with anything unexpected. So just give that a little try. Make a layer, put some artwork in there, move it around. Um, so um, what I'm going to just show you real quick before we end this up, a uh, little movie is if I was to select layer 2 you'll see that those lines that are part of layer 2 are shown in red and that layer 1 is shown in blue this is how Illustrator behaves every new layer gets a new color so if I was to add another new layer that layer and any artwork on it will now be green so here's a shape that I've drawn on layer 3. Layer 3's color is green and if I select it there's the green selection and green bounding box and that um, that's helpful just to make sure that we're able to you know visibly differentiate our elements um, and, and understand which layers that they're on um, and if you don't like the color you can always just double click on it and go in and say that you'd like to change it to you know whatever teal or brick red purple 
sure, purple. So now it's all purple. Um, that is going to conclude our intro to layers. We're going to move on to some more complex stuff here next.